Hey everybody, this is Mike the Media Man from the Media Man Studio Review Channel. I wasn't really planning on doing a video today, so this will kind of be unscripted and we'll just wing it as we go. Uh, but I had the opportunity to take two of these RTX 3070s and put them in this P620 ThinkStation with the Threadripper Pro. So I thought I'd take you along for the ride. So at the Media Man Studio Review Channel, we're always trying to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. And today we're looking at dual GPU systems or multi-GPU systems. And you ask yourself why you want to use two GPUs in a system. Um, when you're doing things like GPU rendering with uh, Maya or Blender, and you're using Arnold, V-Ray, Octane, or Redshift, those are all software packages that are going to utilize multiple GPUs. Also, you might uh, want to be doing stuff maybe in uh, DaVinci's Resolve which also uses multiple GPUs. So we're gonna install and configure two of these inside the P620 ThinkStation. This is the Threadripper Pro. One of the things, one of the really nice things about a Threadripper Pro is that it has 128 PCIe lanes. So it has six PCIe slots, but you need to have the lanes for the connectivity or the data pass between the device and the CPU. So uh, let's start with the install. So I, I said that I had two of these. I was actually lucky, lucky enough to get four of these, uh, but they're all not going to fit in the machine, of course. So I already have one installed. I've been doing some benchmark tests with a single CPU, uh, but let's walk through the installation of installing multiple GPUs into a workstation. All right, here's the nice spring-loaded door mechanism that I was talking about. It's probably the only thing I really like about this design, but that's okay. All right, so here we have a PCIe already in, in slot one. Uh, and it does actually in the manual and on the motherboard itself, uh, right here underneath the CPU. And here, we'll just take this one out. There we go. Make sure the connectors are in there nice and tight. And it does label right here. It says, slot installation orders 315426. But the problem with this is that these are blower style cards. So they take air in and then they blow it out the back or out exhaust outside of the case itself. So we cannot stack these right on top of each other like this, or for the camera. We cannot stack these right on top of each other like that. There won't be enough space in order to get airflow into the fan and then out the back. So we do need to leave some space. So for this installation, we are going to install it in slot one and slot four. The nice thing about this system again, as opposed to some of the desktop systems, is that it has six PCI slots. Five of them are directly attached to the CPU itself. So meaning direct activity, uh, direct connectivity and data throughput to the CPU itself. So this is what you need. Uh, also 16X, 8X, 16X, 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 8X. These cards will run at 8X, but you know, I'd like to give them as much bandwidth as humanly possible, or in this case, technically possible. So let's install this one back into slot one. All right, and one slot GPU number two into slot four, and giving a little space, one PCI slot space between them for airflow. So, since I've done this a few times already, it's very difficult to get these power connectors on while you're working or while it's inside the machine. So I'm gonna put them on before I put the card in. So I'd just like to talk about that a minute before we go too much farther. Uh, these do have two eight pin connectors right here. So that means I need four eight pin connectors off my power supply. This machine actually came with two eight and two six. And you can get converter cables to go from six to eight pin, six pin to eight pin. Um, me being the engineer that I am, I just kind of jerry-rigged that one and created my own eight pin connector. And then I'll use the two eight pin connectors that came with the motherboard itself. Now, if you're going to do that, again, check on your power supply, make sure your power supply, the rails in it are supporting or have enough wattage. Uh, each eight pin connector is 150 watts. So that's 300 watts per card. The TDP on this card is 220 watts. 
So that's plenty of power. And we want to make sure the power supply is going to feed all of the devices in the computer. So this is a 1,000 watt power supply. And we have 220, 220 plus the CPU itself, which is 250 watts. So we're well underneath the 1,000 watts of power required to run the system. So we are operating in safe parameters. All right, first one in. Uh, this one is kind of a dual cable, so I'll, I'll give you a, a shot of that from above. So it's actually a six pin with a little adapter, a little extra clip on the side to form it into an eight pin power adapter. So let's plug that one in. All right, all cables are tightly secured. Let's slide it into its slot. All right, everything's lined up. For those that have never installed a graphic card before, it actually goes in quite easy as soon as you line it up. One of the things to look for if you're going to take it out is, see that little red clip right in there? You gotta make sure that you lift that up and away from the card in order to pull it out. You can't just pull it out, it's got a little locking me mechanism on it. And this is a little bit of a toolless design so that holds the cards in like that. So I'm gonna set up uh, a monitor, we'll do some benchmark testings, I'll bring you guys along for that experience and we'll see what it runs like. I've already done the benchmark test for the four GPU renders that we're gonna use with one card. So now let's see how far we get with two cards. So I've got both GPUs in the machine. I fired up the machine. I've got a hardware monitor running so that we can look at things like GPU temperature, you know, the core voltage, uh, the clock speed of both GPUs, as well as the memory usage and CPU utilization. So we'll run the V-Ray GPU CUDA test first and see how long it goes. This takes about a minute. So it has recognized that there's two cards in the system. We'll start the test. So you'll notice, uh, you'll hear in a second, the fan starting to ramp up. So idle these cards run at about 40 degrees Celsius and about 1100 RPMs for the fan. But you'll hear the fans ramp up in a second. So utilization here is at 100 on both cards. So both cards are being fully utilized. Core voltages are approximately the same, 1.063. And one card is already ramped up to about 1700. The other one is running at about 1400. So, uh, and here you can see the temperatures are going up. So we're running about 57 degrees Celsius and 59 degrees Celsius in the two cards. It'll probably get up to about 62 degrees. There's the fans running, if you can hear it. Put through my microphone. Yeah, we're running at about 61 degrees and 62 and 60. Core voltage is holding steady. One fan is up to 2700 RPM, so they get quite a bit loud, these blower style cards, as opposed to the three fan, like in my RTX 3060 Ti video. If you haven't seen it, take a look at that one. And if you have any comments for this, please, again, leave the comments down below in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, so this one's done. Uh, the original score, so for a single CPU and the exact same machine with one RTX 3070, we were running at 1174. So in this time we're running 2374. So we more than doubled our score just by running two GPUs. So we got about 110, 115% improvement just by adding a second CPU. So let's check out the GPU V-Ray uh, RTX test. Again, it's recognized both cards. We'll do a fast forward here. Okay, so the test is almost done. The first time that we ran this test uh, with just one card, we ran at 1676. And now we have 3391, so definitely a two times improvement. So those are both fantastic scores. So 
So I have another V-Ray benchmark that I've downloaded, and this one I think is a little older, possibly not. Uh, 1.08, so V-Ray Bench 1.08. This does a CPU and GPU, and we will agree. Uh, but we'll turn off the CPU and we'll just do the GPU test. So CPU off, GPU start. So again, the first time that I ran this test, we were looking at GPU was running 33 seconds. So again, full utilization, 100% on both cards. And it ran at 17 seconds. So that's quite an improvement. So almost a definite 50% improvement. So just slightly under 50%. So again, adding two CPUs to any kind of machine that's doing GPU rendering, a dev look, or if you're actually doing animation production, this is a great way to go. Now remember, you don't need to install it in a machine like a Threadripper Pro or something that's an expensive workstation. As long as it has two PCI slots and you have enough PCI lanes to saturate those, at least eight per uh, PCI slot, and those are directly attached to the CPU. So not all motherboards, you're looking at uh, an X570 motherboard for the um, AMD, and for Intel, it'll be the uh, 490s. So, and only certain manufacturers, something you definitely gotta look at when you're purchasing a board for doing multiple GPU rendering. So the next test we're gonna run is the uh, Octane Benchmark. You can download this from the Octane's website. I'll leave links down below for all of the links for the benchmark test that I used. So this one's just a straight up GPU renderer. Uh, it's a fantastic renderer for animation production, so you should look into it if you've never looked into Octane before. It takes a little bit for workflow, but it's well worth it. And it has recognized both RTX cards, and the RTX is enabled in this. So this one, again, uh, should take a couple minutes to run. Time lapse. All right, so the Octane um, benchmark just finished, and as you can hear, the fans ramped up quite a bit. So we're running at about 3,300 RPM on each GPU, they're starting to ramp down now. But our score, 824.08. So our original score with one GPU was 407. So 407.81. And with two GPUs, it's 824.08. So again, more than a 50 or more than 100% improvement just by running two GPUs. So that's a, a fantastic investment if you're looking at GPU rendering just by putting in two GPUs. So I was hoping to show you a demo in Arnold and Maya on how to render with multiple GPUs, but the benchmark test that I have and the method that they use seems to be only utilizing one of the GPUs. So I'm gonna do some more research, maybe look at uh, other benchmark tools for Arnold, and uh, maybe we'll update this video in the future. But now we'll move on to uh, the Redshift renderer. All right, so the last test we're gonna do today is the Redshift benchmark test. So once you install Redshift on your computer, you then have, it actually automatically installs the benchmark for you. It's just kind of difficult to find. So it's actually in C program data Redshift bin. So program data on most of your computers, if I actually look into C, program data doesn't show up here program files, but no program data. So the easiest way to find it is just do a search for Redshift. And then again, you're looking in the program data folder, bin. So uh, it's just a bat, there's nothing, there's no interactive to this, nothing to watch. So I'll launch the test and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the results. So our Redshift test is done. And the first time that I ran this test, I ran it with one a single GPU and it ran at four minutes and 32 seconds. So if you wanna see your output here again, it's in the program files, C program files Redshift bin, and there is a PNG file that says Redshift benchmark output. So this time it ran at two minutes and 13 seconds. So definitely to cut the time right in half. 
great improvement. So two GPUs is definitely worth it for Redshift. So that's gonna conclude our little experiment on multiple GPUs in one system. You know, we did see improvements on three of our four uh, GPU renders. Again, I'll get back to Arnold, uh, do some investigation. If anybody knows anything, please put it in the comments down below on how to configure Maya to use multiple GPUs. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave your comments below and subscribe to my channel. We'll be doing some more videos of equipment and workflow for the creative industry. So thanks a lot and uh, I'll see you in the next one. If you like this video, click on the link up here to the RTX 3060 Ti review that I did, as well as a closer look into the Lenovo P620 ThinkStation with the Threadripper Pro processor.